Royal Dutch Shell is heeding London's call and getting ready to move its tax head office to Britain from the Netherlands. It will also end its dual share structure and make a host of other moves. Brian Sullivan joins us with more on what's behind this move just a day after COP26 pretty much ended, Brian. Yeah, and this is a bigger story than it may seem on the surface, Kelly. You read your, your headlines like, oh, who cares? Well, it's a big deal. I'll tell you why. Royal Dutch Shell, as I'm calling it, pulled a Unilever. That's another Dutch company that made the same move to the UK earlier this year. Now, this is not a done deal yet. It is subject to a shareholder vote, and there are reports the Dutch government is panicking. In fact, there is a parliamentary address scheduled for Monday. This is the biggest company in the Netherlands and one of its oldest, roots going back to 1890. Now, also, this is going to kill its dual share structure. They had one trading in London, one trading in Amsterdam or in A and B. Now they're going to just combine it in London, Amsterdam, U.S., but under one share. I'll get to why in a moment. Now, if they move their tax headquarters, some say, who can blame them? Here's kind of a recent rundown of what's happened. Now, Shell and other fossil fuel companies are constantly beaten up by the Eurozone and the Dutch government. There's a 15% tax on its A shares, but not on its B shares. But the government limits the number of B shares Shell can buy back. So investors are frustrated. They can't buy back as much of their own stock as they would like. You had a court ruling in May pushing them to decarbonize faster than they had planned. They're appealing that ruling. And last month, a huge Dutch pension fund said it is dumping all shares of Royal Dutch Shell. So in other words, the company, Kelly, kind of taking a body blow from all sides. I have a couple of questions. Is this a win for Brexit? I was just in the UK last week, as you know. City is booming. New office towers everywhere. Looks like they might be welcoming a bunch of new highly paid Shell employees into the city of London. This would be a huge blow to the Netherlands if another one of its biggest and oldest companies decides to leave. Absolutely. Brian, the point that you make about the attractiveness of the UK is interesting. The Hague did rule that their scope three emissions would have to be cut by 45 percent. So could this be a way to get out of it? Because this company seems to embody the green transition in a way, I mean, at least of the oil majors, and maybe I'm wrong about that. No, you are right. You are right. And they're doing it. They're sold off their Texas land as well. They're making some changes. But you got to understand, you've got some mid-level electric bureaucrats in, the, in, in Europe, Kelly, who are basically saying, you need to do this at this speed. They know nothing about business. They don't run the company. And they're telling companies what to do. And guess what? Those companies, maybe like a Royal Dutch Shell, are going to vote with their feet. And by the way, the company will no longer be called Royal Dutch Shell. They're going to just be called Shell. This is like, I mean, if there was a company with American in its name that's been around for 130 but years, Brian, then they moved to Montreal, Canada. Here's it's a big deal. my question. If they were to go to the UK, couldn't they still face massive pressure to reduce emissions? It's not like they'd be going to Texas. <laughs> no, maybe they would or should. Yeah, but it's not the same. The UK with Brexit makes its own rules now. They yeah. are not subject to EU rules. A bunch of people in, you know, Brussels making decisions for companies that aren't even based in the countries they represent. Hmm. It's a big deal. It's really interesting. No, it's a really great explainer, Brian. We appreciate it.